Thank you. Uh, so our next talk is by Dr. Ricardo Latanzi from NYU on Cloud MR. And just as a reminder, we're running about 10 minutes late, so uh, we'll, we'll shorten the break a little bit. OK. Do you see the full screen? Yes. OK. Hi. Thank you for the invitation and the introduction. I have nothing to disclose. Uh, let me begin by acknowledging the people who have worked on this project in different capacities. First of all, Dr. Eros Montin, who is the chief architect of CloudMR and has led software development. Dr. Franchitti has told us a lot about cloud computing and the other people in this slide are, uh, have helped with programming or providing precious feedback to us. And I would also thank the NIH, uh, like to thank the NIH and SF for uh, grant support. So the outline of my presentation is the following. First, I will tell you about the motivation behind CloudMR. Second, I will describe the software architecture and the available applications. And then I will discuss a release plan and tell you how CloudMR could be integrated with other existing software. Finally, I will conclude with, uh, with a few take-home points. So we started CloudMR because we thought there was an unmet need for easy to use simulation software in MRI. The increasing number of MRI installations has created a still unfulfilled need for uh, training resources and experienced personnel, especially in non-Western uh, countries, including China. And another problem we think, which is still common to all countries is that MRI scanners are mostly used clinically. So, MRI research and technology development is a privilege for a few lucky people like us. The possible solution would be to rely more on simulations. So in silico research could democratize MRI training and research. In fact, there are already many open source tools to simulate different aspects of the MRI experiment. And I've seen amazing ones at this conference. However, these tools are often, uh, often have limited scope they're not integrated with each other and they provide sometimes insufficient documentation and some of them really require extensive background knowledge in order to be used by people with no MRI experience. So given such a met need, the goal of CloudMR is to integrate, generalize, standardize and extend existing software to develop a comprehensive platform to simulate the complete life cycle of an MRI experiment. In other words, our goal is to facilitate the dissemination of existing software. And we started with some specification in mind. So we want CloudMR to be open source, to have a web-based graphical user interface so the user could do everything from the web browser if they wanted to. We wanted to implement, to develop a modular uh, software architecture, having the user not to worry about updating the software to the latest version each time to provide cloud computing capabilities to be vendor agnostic and to develop something which was intuitive to use for people who wanted to be training in MRI without much experience. Based on those specifications, we made the following choices. First, we decided that all computation jobs would be executed via Docker containers. Then we contemplated three possible workflows for a cloud MR. Uh, so in the first workflow, the users log into, into a portal, cloudmrapp.com, select the desired application and run simulation directly from the web GUI on the web browser using our NYU Amazon AWS account. And this is a schematic of a workflow one in which a user can sign up, then log in and activate one or more applications from the available ones. Then they set up and run computation directly from the web browser without installing anything. And in this configuration, the jobs are run in the cloud inside the NYU AWS control tower and the costs are charged to the project account. Once the job is completed, the user can display and analyze the results from the web browser. The, the second, in the second workflow, the user download containers for the desired application and run simulation either locally or using their own cloud computing provider. And in the third work workflow, users don't launch the GUI to use the application, but run directly computation jobs using RESTful APIs, either as standalone simulation or as part of their software. 
in all cases, user authentication is based on Laravel using JSON web tokens. And the results of Cloud MR applications are synchronized on a cloud database. Uh, one of the specifications was to have a modular software architecture, and we're not software engineers, so we looked for inspiration. We decided to copy the nervous system in which the human brain sends commands and receives feedback via the spinal cord. In this example, the efferent path tells the hand to adjust the temperature of the water, and the afferent path tells the brain whether the water is too hot, too hot or too cold. Similarly, we designed CloudMR to have a brain which can run a request down the spinal cord to assign a job to a specific muscle. The muscle will then let the brain know if the job succeeded and what the results are. And as we have multiple vertebrae in our body, CloudMR has multiple basic computational units. And based on what the user requests, the brain assembles a pipeline of tasks which with the required basic units to complete the job. And when a task is completed, the basic unit sends an update to the brain. Let's see more in detail in details how this works. So the brain is divided in three components. The first one is the cerebrum, which is a database that keeps track of users' authorization, job status, and data files. At the moment, we have one cerebrum, but there could be more. And also, as the cerebrum keeps track of all the computations, it will allow us to run statistics on usage for the various applications. The second component is the cerebellum, and the cerebellum it is the component that orchestrates computational resources needed to execute the jobs. And uh, in, the, in the workflow two, for the workflow two, this will be implemented using Terraform to create clusters on the desired cloud computing service, and then Kubernetes to manage the resources uh, within, uh, within each cluster. And uh, finally, the final component is the brainstem, which has a series of duties. They check user authentication, assembles the pipeline based on the requested jobs, breaks this pipeline in, into tasks and assign them to proper basic units. It also keep tracks of the pipeline status using an internal Redis database and synchronize the results from the basic unit with the main database, which is in the cerebrum. It also is responsible to expose the RESTful APIs to the authenticated user for the workflow tree. So as we saw, the brain is in charge. However, the actual work is done by the basic unit. Each basic unit is made of two components, the spinal node and the muscle. The spinal node receives tasks from the brainstem, validates them using a tool called Marshmallow, and downloads the needed data for the computation. If the task is valid, it sends a task ID back to the brainstem, and then requests the task execution from the muscle. The muscle is a Python container image with a salary framework that queues and manages task execution in the background, a Redis database with the status of all tasks, the needed redistributable package. For example, if you're using MATLAB, you have to download the MATLAB environment only once for a, then the container will know is already installed, and the executable code, which for us now is in C++ and MATLAB. And then the muscle tells the spinal node when a task is completed, and the spinal node updates the brainstem and sends a link with the location of the results file. Like our brain interacts with the environment through our five senses, or six if you're a Spider-Man, the brain of CloudMR needs to interact with the users. And for this, we develop a graphical user interface that functions as the senses for a, a CloudMR. Our first front-end implementation was based on AngularJS, now we're almost done rewriting everything in React.js and Redux. The backend is based on a PHP to access the database and JavaScript. And all Cloud MR applications will be accessible when ready via a web portal, which will be reachable at cloudmrapp.com. And for all the applications, we are implementing a standardized front end, front end which, in which the GUI of every application is three tabs, home, setup, and results. And within each tab, there, is, there are expandable panels that guide the users through the process of setting up and running computation jobs. So let's look at a few examples. So this would be the home page of the CloudMR portal where the user can sign up and log in. Once you log logs in, 
is taken to its home page where it can launch applications and interact with the stored information such as uploaded data, simulation or results. And at the moment we have three applications in CloudMR, Camry, Cloud Accessible MRI Emulator, is a block simulator based on a pseudo MRI, the simulator developed by Chris Collins' group when he was at Penn State. Mr. Optimum is a tool that allows to upload MR data in any format, for example, the ISMRM MRT format, and calculate SNR with various methods in a standardized way. And then uh, DGF is a framework for uh, rapid electrodynamic simulations for simple tissue mimicking objects and it uses the dyadic ring functions to enable full wave, simula full wave simulations of the ultimate intrinsic SNR, as well as the SNR of finite arrays you can define. And as I mentioned, every application has three tabs, home, setup, and results. Here we're looking at the home tab for a Camry with a list of available data and completed job results. And you can see there are two expandable panel in this case for the home tab. Uh, in this video, we'll show the setup tab for DGF. From the first uh, panel, the user can select the frequency in the field of view. Then it can define a multi-layer sphere, for example, assigning properties to mimic the human net, so assigning conductivity, permittivity, the layer uh, of, the, of the different, uh, the thickness of the different layers, for example, to do the skin, the skull, and then can define a particular color array or choose them from a list of predefined color array and then before queuing the job. And then it will simulate the electromagnetic field of the coil and will return the SNR for a specified plane. And all this, this is all based on a web GUI. So if you're working on a, operating on a, within the workflow number one, or you will be doing all of this through an internet browser. And here we're looking at the results tab of Mr. Optimum, where users can display and analyze results, drawing regions of interest and take a look at the corresponding histogram or the statistics. And in this case, the result is an SNR map for a 2D section inside the uniform uh, spherical phantom. So if you try, you will see that you cannot log in from the portal at the moment. And so when will uh, CloudMR be available? Following a first round of beta testing, we decided to rewrite the front end in React.js and made some changes in the architecture. The new features are almost ready and we plan to test the current applications in the next two months. We have two prototypes, uh, two additional uh, applications in the pipeline, which are uh, basically already at the prototype status. Uh, one is Poro, Performance Observer in uh, Receive or Transmit, which will enable users to upload Call simulations, for example, from uh, CM CST, SAMCAD, XFTDD, and evaluate the absolute performance of the coil against the corresponding ultimate intrinsic SNR or transmit efficiency. Then test temperature estimation from SAR simulation is an application for a MR safety simulation. And we hope to start an external beta testing before ISMRM and open CloudMR to the public by next summer. And the code will be accessible from our GitHub repository as it becomes available. So in the last few slides, I would like to discuss what we think is the potential of CloudMR, which is still a, a young uh, tool compared to the others you've seen in these sessions. So let's use Camry as an example. In Camry, the user can select a predefined coil and anatomical model choose from a list of pulse sequence and image reconstruction settings, and then run the simulations and process the results of a synthetic image. However, instead of using the, sole, the defaults or predefined setting, the user could, for example, choose to import the delta V0, the P1 fields of the coil, the electric fields, or the gradient field. For example, we can import P1 and E fields obtained with any electromagnetic field simulation tool. This tool could be, for example, Marie, which is a very fast numerical simulation simulator based on integral equations, and it's open source. We could also use any external CAD software to design different coils and calculate the associated field with Marie or other software. And we could also connect a software for pulse sequence design and plug new sequences into Camry. And this, for example, could be done by using PulseAC. And then we could also reconstruct the simulated case space from Camry with any image reconstruction algorithm. 
So instead of being limited by the predefined, predefined options in Camry, we could connect BART. And if we want to calculate the SNR maps, in addition to the images, we could simply integrate Mr. Optimum into the pipeline. In fact, for the recent papers, we connected BART to Mr. Optimum to calculate the SNR associated with different image reconstruction methods. And as you see, we could assemble a pipeline to create a complete virtual MRI scanner that people could use to test new ideas or simply to learn about MRI. Thanks to the modular interface, it is not difficult to integrate external applications within CloudMR, and we can do this in two ways. The simplest way would be to translate the input and output variables to ensure compatibility, and this only requires to implement dedicated input-output basic units and to change the pipeline rules in the brainstem. We could also decide to fully integrate an external application. For example, this is what we have done with Camry, which is the cloud MR version of uh, pseudo MRI at the pseudo MRI simulator from Penn State. And the second option requires to compile external software into basic units within Docker containers to ensure input-output compatibility, define pipeline rules to, for connection with other cloud MR applications, and also create dedicated panels, panels for the GUI. For existing panel templates, like the 2D results visualizer I show, this is not a problem because this customiz customization can be easily done with a JSON file that defines the desired widgets, options, and labels. But for uh, different panels, for example, if you want a 3D visualizers, we need to implement it. So in conclusion, I presented CloudMR, which is an open source software platform for the simulation of the complete life cycle of an MRI experiment. The web-based GUI connected with cloud computing simplifies software dissemination, providing a unique tool for MRI training and research to anyone with internet access. And the users don't have to worry about updating the latest to the latest software version because that's taken care of within the containers. And we develop CloudMR as a platform for software standardization and dissemination. And to achieve this, we design a modular in intuitive software architecture that facilitates the integration with external software. We do not have a lot of manpower. We're not really programmers by, by formation. So we hope some of, uh, some of you <laughs> will like to collaborate with us and continue to improve CloudMR. And with this, I would like to thank you for your kind attention.